go and then I'll get us kicked off. All right, welcome everyone to another Trust Engine Tuesday mastermind call, whatever you would call it. I forgot what they call it these days, but that's all right. You know, <laughs> Friday the mastermind call and I'm, you know, used to being there. I'm Todd Bookspan coming in today live to talk about new and profitable ways to make money from your database. And I'm joined by one of the legends of our community, none other than Bill Hillestead. What's up, Bill? Oh, not much. Uh, happy to be here, Todd. You know, I can think of just some of our earliest calls with you running us through Facebook and database. And um, and I just really remember gosh, meeting you, gosh, maybe 2007 or 2008, um, if, you know, for the first time, you know, here in Arizona. <laughs> and just uh, I always look at you as such an innovator. So anytime we have you know, an opportunity to to get together and chat is always an exciting day for me. Oh, well, thank you. You know what? It, it hasn't changed for me. It's been, you know, 30 plus years and uh, it's always been the same thing. He or she with the most friends wins. It's, it's, there's only two marketing functions. I'm either growing a database or I'm nurturing a database. That's it. More contacts or strengthening the contacts I have. I've stuck with that forever. And as you know, I've worked with you know, ridiculous quantities of, of mega producers and whatnot and just building their personal brand, but it always comes down to database. And that's the big difference. Everybody else, because yes, I've generated well over a million mortgage leads and over $50 billion in business, but I'm not a lead guy. I view leads and marketing as a way to grow my database. And I've always said that if you do that, if you really focus on growing a database with people who know, like, and trust you, you, that's it. That's the business. That's the value. You can change industries. It's not just mortgage. I don't care if you want to quit and open a gelato shop. You've still got this massive following and all these friends that will support you. And I've seen it happen plenty of times to people that that transition from one industry to the other. It, database, database, database. Everybody needs to get it. Uh, be famous in your market and the rest comes together. And when you're talking database, you're really talking two things. When I think database, I think, you know, names, phone numbers, email address in a yeah. CRM. And then, you know, also now, would you consider your social following part of your database? Yeah. Uh, and look, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I think I've probably done more CRM implementations in my lifetime than anybody, anyone will ever meet. And I love CRMs, but at the end of the day, it really comes down to people who know, like, and trust you. We always said that it's in everything in life is suspect, prospect, customer, client, champion. So suspect, stranger that I'm trying to, you know, lead, new person I met, whatever. Prospect, I haven't done business with them yet, but they have a positive expectation for future interaction. If I go, hey, I'll put you on my mailing list. Uh, great, more junk mail that will clog up my inbox. That's not a positive expectation. Somebody who likes you enough that they actually look forward to, whether it's getting your emails, talking to you, or seeing your posts in their Insta, doesn't really matter. As long as I have a positive association with you, yeah, it's hot because I, I like getting your stuff. I was talking to Dave the other day and going, you know what? I don't, I've, I've never done loans, but I still always open the links because I love seeing the interviews and the stuff that comes positive expectation, future interaction, your database is the people who have that, a positive expectation that you guys will be connected in the future for future interaction. They're friends. He or she with the most friends wins. So I don't care if you're doing it with your CRM. I'm a big fan of doing it with Instagram and Facebook because it's because more than half the people in this country check their social feeds before they put a foot on the ground in the morning. And yet you're really killing it if you can get 20%, 22% of your emails to even be opened. Uh, so I'm not big on the CRM side as much for building relate. Friends don't CRM friends. I want to build friendships. That's why I like the social stuff. You know, it's funny that you say that because you know, makes me think of a, of a couple things, you know, relationships, relationships keep coming up. I'm speaking at a, um, an investing conference today and I had dinner with the other speakers and they were just talking about how it's all about having something else 
to talk to realtors about, to build relationships with their database. And I thought, okay, that's interesting. And then um, Deborah Bird and I interviewed yesterday a guy named Pace Morby for our podcast that's officially launching next Monday, shameless plug. And, um, and he is the top subject to guy. He bought 192 homes and over 500 or 5,000, some, some big number of multifamily units with $0 out of his pocket. And he said, it's all about relationships. And he said the difference for him, he found was that he actually takes the time to understand what's important to people so that when he, so that he can add value. So he was able to buy his first property that he bought for less money than someone else was offering this woman because he understood what was important to her. Um, and so I think when you're talking about this, and you're listening to this as a loan officer, you have to be thinking about how can you better connect with people? Because I find that the reason that we don't call, I use we as us loan officers, we don't call our databases, we have call reluctance because we don't know what to say. We haven't built relationship and rapport to know what's important to them so that when we call them, we know what they're after. And you know, if there's something that Deborah Bird has taught me about social media is that um, it's pretty easy if you just ask, right? The whole slide into your DM thing. So I guess we can talk about that more as we go. But um, but I love it. That's what uh, that's what what you just said made me think of. Yeah, you gotta. And by the way, that's in 1994 when there was I don't even know what there is today, but it was a a four page 1003. And when Tim Brahim and I started First Rate Financial, uh, uh, actually 95, it's July 7th 95. We created a fifth page to the 1003, and we found out all kinds of other stuff about people. We knew your kids' names and birth dates and, and your hobbies and interests and whatnot, and it was all built into our ACT database, and, and we made sure that everybody got something on their birthday in the mail that was handwritten, that, but, but we learned about them so that we could speak to them. Same thing today in sales, even at the big monsters like Rocket and Quicken, they've got it down to a science. It's 38 minutes. If I can keep you on the phone for 38 minutes, you won't go somewhere else. And the key is, and it's about 30%. I have to make sure that you're talking at least 30% of the time, 30 to 33% of the time. Salespeople that just want to show up and throw up, they're always, well, what can I say? No, no, no. I got to get you talking. That's, that's, that's building a real relationship. If we just get out of sales mode and actually connect to people, then we learn to use technology to do it in bulk. Here's how you get 10,000 people in your database that really do know, like, and trust you. You know, it was interesting. Um, those of you who uh, watched the Modern <coughs> Mortgage Summit, you know, that's really what Jeremy Forsey talked about. He talked about by just asking four more questions on his 1003s in the first quarter, he got 17 more applications from the people who were in process and had applied that quarter. And it was really just silly things. Um, I don't want to use the word silly. Scratch that. I didn't say silly things. It was it was asking the things that Bill just mentioned. It was asking things about your kids, which, you know, it's funny. I always feel like I was good at rapport at loan officer because I would ask someone, right? Hey, Bill, how many, you know, um, how many dependents do you have? Right. Which, you know, now, of course, you would want to say kids, right? You don't even need that on the 1003 anymore. I don't, I, I'm always shocked when I hear that. Right. And Bill says, oh, I have, you know, you have two, right, Bill? Is that right? Is that the right number? Um, yes, two, two, uh, and and so the whole idea is. But then you go deeper, right? You don't just say two, right? Awesome. I say great ages, and they tell me their ages, and I'm like, oh, boys or girls, and they say, oh, I've got boys, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. I don't know anything about boys. I've only got three daughters, um, but I've got a couple of nephews, and they're crazy. How are your kids? Um, and then I dig in deeper, and then Jeremy took it one step further because he said, awesome. Where, where do your kids go to school? Um, and they would tell him, he say, oh, awesome. Like, you know, who's, who's their favorite teacher? Um, and he would, they would tell him that. And then he'd say, awesome. Who's the principal? And they would tell him that. And they like, do you like her or him? <laughs> um, and then he's calling the school and he's setting up a meeting with the principal to go in there and say, Hey, I'd love to share what I'm helping doing to help people build wealth through home ownership with your other teachers. Would that be okay? And he said, he's already got his first meeting lined up to do that. And so we're talking about things that aren't, uh, don't cost money that you actually can pick up the phone and have a conversation in conversations you're already having. And then there's probably a way, Bill, for someone to go back. Let's pretend you did a loan for someone last year and you haven't talked to him since then. You don't know these things. There's there's a way if you're comfortable being uncomfortable to go back and ask him these questions. Yeah, and I, it, it just has to become a, a habit. Uh, we always just, I've my whole life, it's all been that. It's about learning those little extra things 
you're talking about your kids are playing in the soccer championship. I put a note down in my CRM or whatever, so that next time I talk to you, I was just curious, whatever happened with the championship game? I didn't, it out. wasn't on the new, you know, whatever. I just always have something to talk about. And I'm always looking for things that I can share with people that they will appreciate. And, and by the way, when you are doing that with your database, a lot of times, and that's one of the things we wanted to talk about today is uh, uh, I, I am doing that with my database, if you will, and monetizing it in other ways. I've been the mortgage, real estate, financial services guy all my life. But when you have all those relationships, other things come along, it's a chance to share them. Sometimes it just builds your relationship. Sometimes it can be quite lucrative. Well, we should definitely talk about that. I see uh, I see one of our friends here that's jumped in. So I want to say good morning to Mr. Dave Savage. How you doing? How you doing, Dave? We have just been digging in and we just were sharing the the Jeremy 4CA 1003 store. I'm really just talking about digging in deeper with people. Uh, you're muted, Dave. It's his first time on he's Zoom. Off his hand, isn't he? I'm a new guy. I'm a new guy. Well, hey, thanks for kicking it off without me. Uh, I'll <laughs> lead, Todd, keep leading the way, and I'll chime in when I, I think I can add some value. But uh, this topic is something that I think is extraordinarily important for originators, and I can't think of anyone better than... Uh, Bill Hillstad to be here. And Bill, uh, I didn't plan it this way, but I released a Tim Brahim video in our YouTube channel this morning. And it was, it was his scripts for helping uh, realtors get listings. And, and it was, you know, how, well, I'm not going to get into the whole how, but it was just funny. I was releasing that this morning and I'm like, oh, and I've got Bill Hillstad today. So it's cool to have both you and Tim doing something really valuable in our community today. Yeah. And you guys, if you guys don't know Tim and know his story, but when I met him in 94, the year before he had done like $8 million. And if you know, a few years later, he's, you know, up in the hundreds. And when I met him, he was a young kid, super anal retentive and a sponge and introduced him to this whole database concept and his first database was three by five cards in a little plastic box. And, and he, he perfect handwriting, very, very OCD, just everything on every single client. And then he had little month uh, uh, dividers and then little daily dividers for this month. And so he'd take them and he'd move them in and he'd lay out his, but he would take this thing to lunch. He would not leave it at his desk. When I first met him, he would take his database with him every day to lunch, take it home at night. It never left his position. It was his pride and joy. And then we got him into act and started first rate and everything really blew up. But yeah, database. He just got it. Relationships. Well, yeah. and the well it's, called, too is it's called Tim Brahim Scripts and Strategies to Help Realtors Get Listings. I'm going to put it in chat and uh, super powerful. And thank you for... Uh, mentoring him and bringing him into the industry. <laughs> I don't know. It might, might have been the other way around, but uh, uh, it was a lot of fun. Well, and I would say there's there's not many people who wouldn't say, I mean, I think that he's one of the all-time, if not the all-time best scripted loan officer, right? He's just very good at that. And and I think that a lot of us get nervous because we don't think we're like a Tim or a Jeremy or or anyone else that you look up to in the industry, but it's just becoming comfortable with your own shoes. And what I tend to find is when you have something to talk about, when you have built the rapport, ask the right questions, it just becomes easy and you don't really need to feel like you need a script. Um, you were saying a minute ago, Bill, that you were talking about monetizing the database, which I know is one of the things that, you know, we want to revisit. We, you know, we've, we've revisited this. We, we started this conversation about six months ago. Um, and I think it's even more relevant now um, as we get into spring home buying season and we were looking for a reason to call um, our database. And, and you know what? Think about it. I mean, Todd, you're one of them. Tim was one of them. You know, Kai McBride, uh, Cindy Ertman, and, and on and on and on and on. Hell, Dave, when I met him and he was a new young originator and we shared the stage and he almost couldn't go on stage. He was so nervous that he, he couldn't function. Uh, but those relationships that you build then turn into other businesses. I'm not talking about changing your business, but especially in a down market like this, it sure is nice we can go do something else. And I, I did want to share one of them that I've been playing with. And I know, Todd, you have now too, just because, hey, something that, that 
helps keep you alive and functioning well during this market while everybody else is bailing, you're going to double your market share simply by surviving. At the same time, if it's something valuable that you can bring to people, uh, you're building relationships and paying some bills. Uh, and I'm not talking about going out and selling them, you know, stuff. But uh, uh, the one that I stumbled into last June was a tax credit program. And I didn't know about all these government tax credits for small businesses. But uh, yeah, every business that spends any money improving processes, if you have less than $5 million in revenue, you're eligible for a R&D tax credit up to $250,000 a year, a check. Uh, if you employ anybody that's in one of 12 protected classes, veterans, anybody who's ever had food stamps, anybody who's handicapped or a former felons, whatever, you have 9,600 bucks per year per employee cash. And right now the mother load of tax credit programs is the employee retention tax credit. I think everybody sees all the ads. But uh, anybody who kept W-2 employees on payroll during COVID is eligible to receive up to $26,000 in a tax credit, not a credit against your future taxes, an actual check from the IRS. And Todd, we've seen it with a bunch of our friends. We just tell people about it. And uh, I can't tell you how many brokers are still going to be there when this thing is gone because... We gave them a million bucks or a million and a half bucks or a couple hundred thousand dollars uh, that just came out of thin air. Uh, uh, pretty exciting stuff, actually. I've, I've been involved in almost a half a billion dollars in refunds for people in just the last six months. Half a billion. That's that's an impressive number. And, you know, what, what I would say is a couple of things. I'll have Paul share it. You know, there's a, a link that you can sign up. And I am... Um, what would I say? I'm restarting the engine, so to speak. So, you know, we got a, a, a fast and heavy start in the fall and talked about it here. And then it kind of, you know, transparently on my end, we kind of fizzled out our, you know, our folks, people weren't that interested in figuring out how to make money and picking up the phone. And I, I'm embarrassed to say that I felt like that was um, the community. However, you know, the handful of loan officers that I know that did um, have made not, you know, they made a significant impact on the businesses they helped. And, they made a little bit of revenue to help themselves along the way. I mean, one of the things I think you guys have all heard me talk about, and I'm really focused right now on um, your wealth as a loan officer. I feel um, I feel like that's that's a big, the number of loan officers who've told me in the last 90 days that they're um, running on fumes from a cash flow perspective um, is sad for me. And I love this. I love this industry. I love all of you. And my goal is to figure out how to help you all um, not just survive, but thrive through all of this. And, you know, those of you who are crushing it, you know, reach out to me because I've got a great group of people coming to Scottsdale in May for a wealth event. You know, some of the people that you know and see on this channel a lot. And it'd be great to have anyone else who's who's willing to, you got to write a check to be there. So it's not a small check. Um, but uh, but that's kind of cool. But I would just say um, the impact that we've had, um, you know, was pretty phenomenal. Would it be helpful, Bill, do you think if I told a couple stories of some of the loan officer success stories of people that they've helped? Yeah, by all means, and people need to understand a little bit about this because it it gets a lot of negative press and that there's been over $3 trillion in fraudulent applications for refunds, uh, just like there was with PPP, only there's so much more money in this program. There's even more scammers. Everybody's out on TikTok. People that aren't even CPAs are going, we'll help you get your employee retention tax credit. So you got to be very, very careful when you're doing this. And people just need to understand, one, that it's real. A lot of CPAs, I actually created a continuing education course for a, a, a CPAs, for accountants uh, at the request of a training company because CPAs don't even get this stuff. But it's it's real. It's big money. I was just with some friends yesterday that have a sporting goods store and they got $300,000 back for a little sporting goods store. Uh, and I've seen up to a couple million bucks going back to brokerages. It's it's real. Uh, if somebody had W-2 employees, they really need to know about it. And yeah, Todd, I'd love to hear some of your stories. Well, you know, I'll, I'll tell a couple. So Adam, who works with me in Win by Noon, so all of you who've been part of Win by Noon or Modern Mortgage Summit, you've all talked to Adam at some point on the phone or via email. And I said, hey, Adam, you should you should do this. 
And um, there was one success story and then one hopefully soon to be success story that came out of it. Um, you know, he reached out to a handful of his friends and one is a doctor and you would think, hey, a doctor crushed it through COVID and through everything else. And I talked to this doctor and her husband and they said that they were um, maxing out their credit cards during COVID because business changed, they, all the extra equipment they had to buy, how they had to buy extra testing equipment and stuff to set up outside to meet with clients um, and all the computer tech technology that was, you know, that was needed. And so Adam um, signed up with with our group adam made the referral and so that's where most loan officers got stuck they wanted to they wanted to sell and it's not a sale it's literally he just did what i asked him to do because adam doesn't overthink it most of the time he literally put the doctor's name phone number email address into the online form and hit send and told her hey someone will reach out to you within 48 hours and so the team reached out to her and long story short you know she ended up getting about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars back which basically will take her out of the debt that she's created um and then guess what adam you know made a few thousand dollars as a referral um part of it up front and he gets the rest of it when you know when she gets her money and, and pays her tab um that was a cool story he also had a, a friend who owns a restaurant and his accountant kept saying you don't qualify you don't qualify you don't qualify you don't qualify and then finally he did the same thing he referred him over and the accountant's like oh never mind you qualified and I filed for you and um the ERC group that we're part of the part of um the, you know the group that Bill's talking about um estimated that they would get about $240,000 um as a tax um credit right as money back and their account was super proud of himself he got him $40,000 cuz he doesn't understand the rules he doesn't understand what it takes he's like I'm going to save you a bunch of money and said he lost him 200,000 and um so they own three restaurants they filed it he filed it for all three and so they fired him. So he's gone now. He lost his clients because he thought he was smarter than everybody else. Um, and then now once they get their refund from the IRS, which they're expecting any day now, then they'll refile with our group. And so they're a future yeah. success story for Adam. But um, I was sort of shocked that this <laughs> account was so bashful on it. Our number one uh, referrer in our group happens to be a CPA. He's smart enough to know he's not the one who should do it. He would rather refer it and make a referral fee. Yeah, they see that a lot. We, we do a lot of refilings. Uh, because it is complex. It's really hard because, well, I had PPP loans and I don't get a count, but I do get to count family members, but not. And and it is complicated. It's got to be done by by experts. And like I said, it's it, the ERC is just one of many programs. And and I like it. I feel good. I'm not a the biggest fan of you know too many government handouts will cause inflation. And I don't know if this is not a handout. It's simply a tax break, where a tax break, in my humble opinion, should be doled out. And that's small businesses. It's, you know, it's 64% of our employment comes from these guys. 99% uh, of the businesses out there are small businesses. Uh, I want to see them get these tax breaks and refunds. It's good for them, good for the job market, good for the economy, good for everything else that's happening. All the real estate brokerages that you know out there, and again, not 1099 employees, so their agents don't count as employees. But yeah, if they got 5, 10, 15 employees, it's it's a big check. It's a big deal. You got self-employed borrowers. Yeah, I can show you how to do a bank statement loan, and, and, and. and by the way, uh, if you had more than 5 and 10 employees, whatever, it could even show you how to come up with the down payment. And just so you guys know how it works, uh, yeah, they typically get, you know, something between fifteen and $26,000 per employee back. It takes the IRS anywhere from three to 10 months to get that money back to them. And it's just treasury checks. But uh, there are advanced funds, people that have stepped up hedge funds that will buy the rights to your tax return. So uh, anywhere from uh, uh, 80 to 90 cents on the high side per uh, uh, 90 cents uh, on the dollar. So great, I got a million dollar refund coming. They'll buy it from me for 850,000 now and give me the money today. So businesses that need it immediately can get it. Kind of a high interest rate, but based on what I can do in my business, for a lot of people, it makes sense. It's just something that every business needs to know about I don't want anybody to sell it, but we tried to set it up because it's a word of mouth thing. Only 4 million businesses, about four and a half million, took advantage of PPP. It could have been up to 26 million. 
Same thing here. The overwhelming majority of people will never take this because they're scared, apathetic, uninformed, whatever. Just if you know anybody that owns a business, uh, curious uh, how you did on your ERC filing. And if they say, my what? Oh, blah, 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 blah. And if they go, oh, I got this. If they got anything less than $10,000 an employee, like Todd's example, probably probably worth getting that checked out because it tends to average a lot more. Uh, uh, most people just don't know how to do it. But that's it. Just ask people. And and like Todd was saying, it two-point referral fee. Uh, great. I'm getting half a million dollars back. Pick up a $10,000 referral fee. Better than a sharp stick in the eye. And you're helping them get a bunch of money that will, if it doesn't save their business, uh, if they're not in that position, then uh, you're at least helping them out. And by the way, biggest misunderstanding of all is people think you have to have done worse. Uh, I, I've had that call from so many people. Uh, all my friends in the industry, you guys know most of them. And they all say the same thing. Oh, no, we, we don't qualify. We did really a mortgage industry. We did great in 20 and 21. It, that's one of over 12,000 ways to qualify. It's not about gross revenues uh, uh, or being shut down. It, uh, it's pretty hard to not qualify. The IRS says it's at least 80% of businesses that qualify. So don't, don't be misled by, I had a good year in 21. I don't qualify. Well, and so let me let me kind of say one thing. So I'll give one more success story. Community member here um, works for a mortgage brokerage, um, got a $987,000 uh, tax credit for the brokerage, and he's getting almost a $20,000 check for referring them over, got almost $10,000 up front, and we'll get the balance once they get paid. And so some of you are working for organizations that also would qualify. So think about that. Some of you may own an organization that qualifies. Think about that. And I think the, the biggest part is, is the loan officers who have overthought it are the ones who um, who wanted to do it, but overthought it are the ones who got stuck because they wanted to pre-screen the client. So Bill's script was the perfect script, right? Hey, tell me about your ERC credit, right? Whatever that sentence that you want to ask them, and that's it. And if they say, what do you mean? I didn't get it. Say, well, you're you're eligible or uh, potentially eligible for 26,000 per employee. Is it okay if I just um, have somebody reach out to you um, to see if you're eligible? And that's it. They're going to say yes or no. Um, and then they're going to say, well, I don't think I qualify. I made too much money. Well, wouldn't it be nice to know whether it's that's actual, that's correct or not? Oh, my accountant said no. Well, most accountants are wrong. Are you sure? I just will have them call. Worst case is you have a five-minute call and, and they tell you that you're qualified and you, and you get back money for your employees. Um, and then literally you just fill out the link. So we get you a link after you sign up. Um, Paul put it in the um, in the chat and in the Facebook group here. So it'll be in the, if you're listening to this on YouTube, it'll be down below, but just go there, fill it out and sign up. And then we'll get you the link and then get you some videos on how to do it so that you can have these calls. But that's really all you want to do. If you start qualifying them after yeah, that, yeah. here's all the rules. Don't, don't, the less, you know, the more effective you're going to be. It's the people who studied it a lot, who are keep getting stuck. In my opinion, are you seeing that too, Bill? Yeah, it's look, like, just don't don't sell, period. It's just it's just a referral. Bring this all the way back to where we started. This was all about database and becoming that person that's always and my relationship is of value to you. This is just one more way you can bring up value. And that's where, like I said, it's curious how you did on your ERC, blah, blah, blah. And if they ask questions, why do, well, I know some guys that are doing really well and seem to have this down to a science. Um and then make a referral and by, that's the ERC. But hey, as you learn more about other, whether it's tax programs like the well, work opportunity tax credits or R&D tax credits, or I'm playing with one now that's uh, uh, the cell mesh network, like your Wi-Fi, but they do mesh towers. They put them in your yard and rent the three by three foot, that's a three by three by three box. And you get 2,500 to 10 grand a month on a 10 year lease to lease that three by three space in your yard or on your roof. Oh yeah, I, I wanna tap into that one as a referral. Uh, when I see a cool gizmo, I mean, hell, we do it, chat GPT. Uh, Connor Cullop was calling me up going, dude, check this out. I'm just writing articles on the 203K and on blah, 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 blah. 
you, you just share cool stuff with friends. Uh, and by the way, chat GPT is insane. I don't know if you guys have done anything on it, but it's, it's freaking me out with the stuff it's writing. But that's the stuff you want to, this is just sharing. Just share something cool. And this one happens to have a finder's fee tied to it. Well, there's nothing wrong with making a little extra money. No, no doubt. So leave it to Bill Hillstad to just not only, you know, get more loans out of a database, but actually get get more dollars. So, you know, first of all, anyone listening to this, you know, we're looking for success stories of loan officers that are doing this. I I love that it's just a great conversation. I mean, I'm always a big proponent that the most valuable um, mortgage professional wins. And this is just another way to, and, and by the way, beyond the transaction, you know, uh, being valuable and doing a transaction is a commodity. How can you be valuable beyond the transaction with your advice, with your introductions, uh, referring people, you know, like, like as mortgage professionals, we can be the most valuable advisors, but we gotta, we gotta be smart about things like this. So Bill, what, you know, we, 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 um, labeled this call as new and profitable ways to make money from your database. So clearly that is, you know, new, um, highly profitable, uh, Remember, folks, those of you that sign up, I'm looking for success stories. Let us know what what are some just just hit us with like and it doesn't have to be like this, but people on this, they're looking you know, to get money out of their database. I'm going to give one example and then I'm going to throw it back to you, Bill. But, Great. you know, for anyone that is monitoring their database with Sales Boomerang, we provide listing alerts. And and one of the, the most valuable things you can do is create two TCAs for those listing alerts. One for the agent, like, hey, I've got some ideas to help you sell that home faster. And then create a TCA for the um, um, seller saying, hey, you're probably buying another home. I, and by the way, you can find that out. And I've got some strategies. So that's something that not enough loan officers are are doing that. Uh, you know, just bef- what are what are a couple other you know, optimize your database, Bill Hill said strategies. And then guys, any questions you have about this tax credit program, put it in chat and we'll answer any questions you have. And we'll talk more about that. But what what are a couple other ideas? Wow. They're, they're, they're candidly, it's almost endless. If you, if you go all the way back to the beginning, if you really focus on building that, that large database of people that you have a legit relationship with, because, oh God, what was, what was, um, not Seth, Cohen, Malcolm Gladwell, the original Freakonomics, uh, and they, was that where they talked about the six degrees of separation that you can get to anybody in the world through six contacts? And they did an experiment where they went from somebody in LA to somebody in New York, and I knew someone who knew someone who knew someone, but when they looked close, they realized that they converged in uh, different people where, well, wow, 37 of the the chains went through this guy in Nebraska. And then they came up with the concept of the connectors and the connector could get to anybody in the world through 2.6 contacts. And by the way, Facebook used to have a tool. You could go and see what your connection rate was. Oh, wow. I'm a 2.95 to my average to connect to anybody in the world. Well, the connectors are the money. It's not just realtors. It's the people who are always referring and uh, and it's easy to identify them. If uh, all I got to do is I got to bring up something about my car or a landscaping or I need a new hair barber, whatever. I just moved to town. It's the person who's always, I got a guy. Oh, I got a gal. Oh, you got to talk to my, that person. That's who you want to get. And, and it's those referrals you need to be that person. You need to be that connector for all these people. And some of those connections, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't do work for anybody. I don't do consulting anymore. I don't do anything. I keep an Amazon wish list, and people are constantly, constantly getting referrals from me, getting pointed to the right connection, getting connected to a different company, whatever it is. And they go to my Amazon wish list, and I get the craziest gifts. Uh, uh, sometimes they're from that, and I don't ask for the referral fee. But just think about all the the different businesses that you could become a source of business for. 
this is one that's easy to monetize it. But like I said, if you do your database right and it's time to retire, you know, although we were talking about, you know, Tim and way back when Tim retired, he pretty much, you know, turned over his book of business to his team, but uh, then took his database and turned it into a coaching company that he did most of the stuff out of because he always wanted to have a reason for a compound in Costa Rica and whatever you could. And then he started an Italian restaurant, uh, a little Italy bistro uh, uh, out there in Conejo Valley and is killing it. But it's the same database, the same people that used to do their loans with them every few years now frequent his restaurant because he's a spectacular relationship developer. That's that's the key. Yeah, TCAs, uh, 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 referrals to, tax credit things, uh, you name it, you name it. But just focus on the database itself. Focus on bringing enough value to people through all these things. Sometimes you can monetize them. Sometimes you don't want to. They still monetize because they drive more mortgages to you and more business to you. But just focus on being of value to people, being appreciated by them. That's why we get into all the weird content we like to do in the social sphere. I'm just trying to do stuff people appreciate, uh, whether it's entertainment value or whatever. How do I bring value to your life? You'll spot the chances to monetize it. And even if you don't, It'll monetize anyway. Uh, I, I can show so many examples of people that went from, you know, less than 10 million to north of 100 million in a few years. And it 100% of the time, it's all about database, personal brand, reputation. Always. You know, it's interesting to me that first off, that you have an Amazon wish list so people can buy you gifts. Like that just blew me away, Dave. Do you have an Amazon wish list, Dave? No, I don't. Well, people always want to send me money and I don't want to charge for my time anymore. I'm past that. So I get right, called that's... all the time. It was, I didn't know what to do. They're like, well, I got to pay you something. I'm like, Hey, you know what? I got a, I got a wish list. If, if you, if you find some value, send me something nice. I just did that for a charity. They had a, I said, how do I, what's the best way to donate? And he's like, just go to my Amazon wish list and buy a lawnmower. It's for a charity that the kids all mow 50 lawns. And after they mow 50 lawns for an elderly person, a veteran, um, or or a school teacher, they get a, a new lawnmower. So I just bought them a lawnmower. I thought that was super super oh, cool. Oh, that's it, cool! It, I need to do something like that. Yeah, that was uh, that was a lot of fun. And you know, I think the other one of the ways that I would be monetizing my database right now, and I and I'm coaching my um, my group coaching clients as well as my team is. You know, we know that Dan Raw, which is talking about in the second half of year, rates are getting lower. And you know, what I feel like is that your clients love the fact that you call them when rates drop and try to sell them something when you haven't talked to them in a year or two. And, you know, I know hopefully you all did a good job when you did your TCAs up front and you coached your clients through, hey, I'm a little different than other loan officers. My job begins when they're cashing their commission check. I'm going to be proactively managing your loan, you know, going forward, you know, blah, blah, blah. You're, you're telling them all that stuff. Um, but then you actually have to do it. And so, you know, my encouragement now is you should be calling everyone in your database. Again, so when the, when you talk to the business owners, you get to add in this ERC script. But when you're calling your non-business owners, you know, you're just letting them know what's going on in the market, right? You're looking at the fact that according to Black Knight data, um, we had the strongest month of year over year increase in prices since last May, right? Hey, good news, your house value is stabilizing, right? And then you're saying, awesome. Hey, the experts are predicting that rates are going to drop in the second half of the year. I just wanted to remind you that I'm watching over your mortgage because you want to be swimming upstream ahead of their servicer, ahead of the postcards they're going to get ahead of the chop shops that are going to open up when rates drop. And so it's such an easy time when you're going to monetize your database in the future to invest a little bit of time now. Amen. Amen. I, you know what? I just, I, I feel preachy because I, like I said, I've been doing this for longer than some of the people here have been alive and it's been the same sermon forever. It's if if people can just get that into their heads, stop selling, start building relationships. Conversations uh, 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 lead to connections. Connections lead to conversions. When I do lead gen, which, hey, you're looking at a guy who spends many thousands of dollars a day generating leads for different things. 
I don't look at leads as a deal or not deal. Everybody that ever gets, oh, these are good leads. These are bad leads. These leads suck. I have these leads. No, no, no. They're just connections. Some of them are now deals. Some of them are later deals. Some of them might be never deals, but they might be referrals. I'm just trying to grow a database of connections. That's why when we do stuff on Facebook, I take your video and I push it out there and and I collect all the people who watch it in earnest. If they watch a through play of your Todd Bookspan video about some win by noon tip, I now know that they dig your stuff. It's it's that's the key for me. I want people who know, like, trust you, have that natural affinity to you. Our moms all told us there's somebody for everybody. I'm telling you, there's 20,000 people for everybody. That's what we've always done in the social sphere. And that's why I like it better than CRMs or whatnot, because I'm catching you in your happy place, social, not your inbox. And I know, I know who's checking you out. I know how much they like you. I know how much they like your content. And we grab them as they watch your stuff, put them in a custom audience so that now they continue to see all your stuff. And we learned that years and years ago that somebody who watches your video is three to four times more likely to connect with you, do business with you than somebody who likes you or follows you. It's the most valuable thing. It's just relationships. Everybody has to get that. Be, be a friend, be a value. Give, 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 ask. Gary Vaynerchuk called it, you know, uh, jab, 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 right hook. Three quarters of what you do should be giving to people, whether you're giving them entertainment, giving them value, doing something like that. The CRC thing, I think it's a value. It's one of my gives. But then you got to ask in between. Everybody should have their mortgage ads and stuff hitting them once a month with all of your give content in between. It's just, there's nothing beats it. You're either growing your database or you're nurturing it. You're making new connections or you're strengthening existing connections. Leads are only a way to grow your database, to make new connections. They're not a way to do business. They happen to do a lot of business, but that's not the reason. That's just a way to pay for your marketing. If you get that mentality and get out of, I need more business. No, you need you need to know more people. Hey, we, I want to add them. something out before we run out of time. Just yep. remind people how many loans are in a database, a well-managed mortgage under management database of a thousand, you know, or, or whatever, pick the number, you know, you want. But There are more loans in it, but what you're going to realistically get from 35 years, what you're realistically going to see is eight to 12%. And yes, 15 is possible, uh, but you're going to pull, if you stay in touch with them and they see you in some sort of a semi-positive light 33 times a year, about three times a month, they actually see you in a, not a, a, a annoying scroll by it, you know, what? Oh, oh, there's Dave again. If you stay in front of them, you're going to pull at least 8% out of your database between direct deals and referrals. 12 is what you should be shooting for. So a thousand people, you should be doing a hundred to 120 sides or deals, loans a year. So, so time out guys. So if you're managing mortgages, you're doing all billstead touch points, it's being monitored by sales boomerang. You're, you're yep. doing annual reviews, a hundred loans. And then you just got an idea with a, with a very valuable heads up to your database where not only can you, you know, like radically help uh, consumers um, who are business owners uh, make, you know, money that they don't know about, you can help them. Like, like, guys, your database is where everything is at. So I hope if nothing else you get from this is your database is the gold. You need to make that your single biggest priority. Uh, Bill Hillstad, yeah. always grateful for you bringing in new ideas, um, especially in a market like this when, uh, mortgage professionals, real estate agents, they need every opportunity they can. And, and now it's an opportunity to have a conversation with all the entrepreneurs in your database, all the business owners in your database, and and you can uh, get loans, uh, get paid on your day job, and, and have a little bit of a side gig. So I, I love it, bro. Right on. Thanks.
That that's, reminds that's, me Dave, of that slide you. you have where it shows um, all the people walking with the question marks over their head. And then you've got, you know, what Zillow and all the other data people have where they've got, you know, their interest rate and all of that. I mean, everyone needs it's to know. Interesting that you asked me that question, Todd. Let's, let's, uh, <laughs> let's. Uh, so tell me you have access report. to that slide. I just, I just got done presenting here at, uh, at Churchill, which, by the way, I, I talked a little bit about this Tim Brahim video. Uh, it's only 15 minutes, guys. This is a must watch. Check it out. But, you know, what Todd was just uh, referring to is your database. And there's there's just no reason in this world now. Uh, and I have loan officers all the time because at Sales Boomerang, we do have a minimum uh, database of 10,000. Guys, there's no reason you cannot have a 10,000 record database. You, one, even if you're a broker, you can partner with other loan officers in your company and have 10,000 records to manage. And, and you can also adopt mortgages and you know get databases from realtors, from insurance agents. There, there is just no reason a mortgage professional in today's world. It may take you a year to get a, a 10,000 record database. But everybody, if you put that as your focus, I'm going to build this database, and then I'm going to take it from a bunch of question marks to a bunch of signals, you know, like who just listed their home, who just double lapped me if it's a prequal funnel, who, who's getting ready to cheat on me if it's in my past customer database, who just improved their credit or is a cash out refi. And then reminder, guys, we're, we're helping you deliver advice, like signal in the database, creates a total cost analysis. And, and guys, when rates start going down, like all the mortgages you're doing north of six and a half, uh, when they hit five and a half, rate and term refi. Uh, when they hit four and a half, another rate and term refi. So, so your database is where it's at today. Your database is where it's at. Like every loan you're doing right now could be three loans. Uh, so anyways, uh, just a few, few thoughts. <laughs> If There's I had slide. stuff like that, uh, yeah, it, it, that's like cheating. Uh, I, I almost want to come back and work again just so I can play with you on the combination of mortgage coach and sales boomerang and all that data in a database. If you can teach people to do the personal, the warm and fuzzy stuff combined with that, and I can tell you that I could 10,000 people, everything to me is just a number. Well, what does it cost me? Oh, this cost me $4. This cost me $8. It, uh, people are contacting me all the time. What's it going to cost me to get somebody to my landing page? You know, buck and a half, 50 cents, whatever. I guarantee I could have people asking to have their mortgages adopted for, you know, a few bucks a piece. Uh, grow that database, find ways to do it. We should probably experiment or do some stuff on how to actually drive people into, because we've done it with, um, uh, what was it, HomeBot or whatever, where we could just drive people to just come in and sign up because they wanted to get the alerts or whatever. That this, I, I want somebody keeping an eye on all this stuff for me. Sorry, tangent, but I never even thought about it until you were just showing that great graphic. You know what I love anytime you have a tangent, that's uh, that's always good. And I think the other part too is think about it too, folks, when you're calling your database, you're, you know, Dave's talked about it, your clients with six and a half and above, but you should also be calling your clients that have a 3% rate and congratulating them on what they have. And um, Dave shopped around a, ter a, a term with our little, one of our, our text groups we have, um, house hostage, right? The people who feel like they're hostage in their house because they've got such a low rate that they can't sell it and move. And you know, <laughs> keep talking to those people and hearing what they have to say and telling them what's going on in the market. Because again, they, they still may never refinance or, or move, but they know other people who are refinancing and moving um, and who own businesses. And so again, if you're if you're having these conversations, congratulating them on taking your advice, even if they went with their service or took somebody else's advice, congratulate them on that and remind them that you're here to help them and here for their referrals. Um, and oh, guess what? They also happen to know a real estate agent. Maybe they can introduce you to him or her, right? There's so many things you can do if you're just willing to pick up the phone, be vulnerable and ask yep. good questions. That was our rule, by the way, back when Tim and I first started. And it was, you know, it's seven LOs that went from, you know, collectively like $34 million to hundreds of millions over a, a two-year period. And our rule was simple. Back then, it wasn't as much about social or email. 
So we just said, if your lips aren't moving, you're on break. And we live by that. And anytime somebody was doing something, somebody come up, uh, so what do you, oh, I'm on break. Uh, uh, communicating that you make your money from communicating with people. Everything else should be team, should be process. Now, some of your communication can be fingers instead of, you know, lips, but you're either, you're either talking to an existing relationship to strengthen it, add value to it, or you're talking and creating a new relationship, but everything else you're doing is preparing to work. It's, it's, you are in the relationship business period. Everything else you're doing is just paying your dues until you can have somebody else do it because all of the Tim Brahims and, and Ryan Grants and Josh Metals and Shayla Giffords and Jeremy, they are the CEOs of their company. They work on the company, not in the company. They're the spokesperson. You are the spokesperson for your business. Right now, you just have a bunch of other roles, but the money comes from being the spokesperson if your lips aren't moving, you're on break, call somebody, build a relationship, strengthen a relationship, send an email, congratulate somebody. That's the stuff that pays off. And it's kind of easy, right? If you actually care and like your clients, it's not that much work. I guess you have to care about <laughs> your clients. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can't fake it. Anyway, uh yeah that's the, like i said i'll go down all the rabbit holes you guys want but i think we're kind of uh, uh at the end of our time here anyway well let's um well let's, let's sort of tie a let's tie a bow on it so um you know my my thinking is 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 number one as we talked about making money with your database and we talked through some different conversations that you can have um if you're someone who has previously signed up to do the erc stuff let's re-engage and let's rethink about who in your database you can reach out to and then think about um, what Bill said, the six degrees of separation, who knows who you want to know. Um, and let's just start making those conversations. If you haven't done it, then great, jump in. Um, I'll get you a couple of videos that I recorded that will help you understand um, enough to feel comfortable making the call. Again, I don't want you to be an expert. Don't go read the tax code and do all that stuff. I looked at it and almost threw up. Um, and then start making calls to your database, not just your high interest rate clients, but your lower interest rate clients. And then have a goal of what Dave talked about, of building your database up to 10,000. Like how long would that take you if you were intentional around that? What does that look like? So that's kind of my thinking on it. You all have an opportunity you get to choose. Are you going to leave this call and um, do something um, productive or are you going to do something intentional to grow your business? That's it. And by the way, Simple. Uh, you said simple. Just keep it simple. I was getting my hair cut and the guy cut my hair and clearly that doesn't take very long. The guy cut my hair, you know, making small talk says blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, well, you know, what are you up to? What do you do? And I'm like, oh, lately I've been doing this tax credit thing. Blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden he's not cutting my hair. And I look over and he's texting. I'm like, what's up? And he's like, texting the owner. We have eight salons, like 170 employees. It's three and a half million dollar refund. Uh, uh, make more money from his referral fee than he makes from cutting hair for a full year. Um, but I never would have thought to bring it up with him or to what everybody knows somebody. And by the way, oh yeah, the hair rep, the the stock star shampoo, the Veda hair rep knows all the salon owners and 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 so it, 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 he told her about it and and the referral stuff from the company pays pays the finder's fees and they also pay an override on finder's fees because hey you found somebody who found somebody so yeah now he's he just had one referral his company but then he had another referral that was a his hair rep and now she's out referring and making a bunch of money and he gets 25 percent of whatever she makes so it's just it's just pass along something good make some money. Don't turn it into a business. Don't spend any money. Don't spend any time thinking about it. Just pass it along and uh, and then put up an Amazon wish list because a lot of people are going to owe you something for this one. <laughs> What's the best thing on your wish list that you've gotten? The best thing on my wish list? I have a scooter out there that that because uh, uh, especially being down at the beach and whatnot, it's we, we don't drive cars anymore. It's bicycles, scooters, whatever. Somebody bought me a scooter on there that has dual 1500 watt motors and it does 46 miles an hour. 
I wear a helmet when I ride my I scooter. Say, I hope they sent you a helmet with that. That is good. All right. <laughs> it's the coolest thing. I'm an right. adrenaline junkie. It's, yeah, I think bird scooter doing, it's supposed to do 50. I just haven't quite got there yet. That's probably good. That's, That's probably good. All right, Savage, What? Uh, how do you want to wrap it up, sir? You know, first of all, I, I just want to thank you, Bill Hillstad, for being just a constant, you know, source of innovation and ideas and and just being captain of of the database. Uh, you know, I do want to remind everyone your your database in this modern era is a combination of what's in your CRM and your social media platforms. Uh, I've interviewed Bill multiple times. You know how to how to leverage your your Facebook database how to leverage your LinkedIn database. I mean, he's the one that showed me how to, I don't think we could do this anymore, Bill, but you could take all of your contacts out of LinkedIn and then you could upload them as a custom audience in Facebook, you know? And yeah, we, we you always know. find the tricks and hacks. Uh, that, yeah. that one's, there's a handful more. One of these days we should probably do, you know, 23's social hacks. Yeah, well, you've helped me personally grow, you know, my LinkedIn um, profile, and you've helped thousands of mortgage professionals go to the next level. Uh, so just super grateful for you, brother. And, and, and I, and I hope, you know, the takeaway here is guys, you know, database, your database is where the gold is recruit realtors databases. I think what they shared today is a good realtor meeting, you know, like realtors are hurting right now, you know, um, first of all, have that, conversation that both Todd and Bill did at the beginning with your realtor. And um, and I know a lot of realtors that could use a side gig also and uh, would love to, you know, um, be bringing this value to their customers and benefiting. So so Todd, just remind everybody again, is it toddbooksband.me? Is that where they're supposed, they're supposed to go? Um, yeah, that's an easy place to go. If you go to toddbooksband.me, it's got all sorts of stuff. It's got first home IQ. It's got win by noon. It's got sign up for ERC um, information there as well. So that's a that's a perfect way to go. That's my link tree and it's got uh, all my stuff. So that's a, another Deborah Bird, a Deborah Bird thing that she teaches. Yeah, uh, yeah she's, that she was me both that too. That's a perfect tie-in to the monetizing your database. It's like, I got this, I got this, I got this. Everybody should have a link tree and have a few other things that they can find through you because you you have these contacts, you have this information, you have access to this resource, whatever it is. That's cool. Well, it's it's done well. And so all they did was buy an Earl that forwards there. Dave, you've done it with savageinsights.com, right? So you can have this thing. And then and I paid for my main link tree so it gets rid of the logo and I haven't made it very fancy. And then I've got free link trees off there. So when you go to my Todd Bookspan, I'm going there right now, dot me, you can actually click on the ERC and it actually takes you to an ERC link tree. Um, and then that's where I've got these other videos and how to sign up. So it's a pretty cool, um, pretty cool opportunity to use it and then, you know, continue to um, continue to have it be an opportunity for you to update what you want your world to know about you. So I just tell, um, you know, my win by noon community, I tell my realtor friends, I tell my loan officer friends, I tell my friend friends just to go there and learn what is exciting to me at the time. Um, and so I'm going to continue to make it cooler and make it more fun. Yeah, you guys should do a thing on the link tree and how to do that just because it's so easy and everybody because dang it, I, I want to have some place where they can go and, and request a, a, a total cost analysis. I want to go and let them watch some video explainers of how to and it's it's. It's an easier way to put all that information up and do all the videos that you create and whatnot than building a website. Uh, and then you can have all that random stuff, including some of your personal stuff, you know, some fun stuff. Remember, be a human first, be a friend first. I, I love the link tree stuff. That's a great, great one to bring up. Thank yeah, you. Well, I, like for that it. One. I just added it to mine, you know, so I, uh, I've got a link tree. <laughs> dot com how to throw that out there well um, and, and i, I just, and it's sort another shameless plug is that deborah no not deborah her sister denise donahue spoke about it at the modern mortgage summit so those of you uh -huh. who have access to it who watch it make sure you go rewatch the video and and uh, she walks through it but i'm sure we can twist oh that's cool deborah bird's arm to come on to uh on a friday and make sure that we that we chat about it yeah yeah let's do that good conversation what what do you put on your link tree that's the question i want everybody to tell me what do you right. do with your 
Street. Oh, I put this up. Oh, yeah, I got a thing for my art. I, you know, whatever. That's cool. I'm thinking I got to have something new and cool on there. Now, now you've challenged me to put something personal on there because it's pretty much all boring business stuff, but that's okay. It's good uh, you got to entertain me, engage me, make me like you. Oh, I'll do my best, Bill. I'll do my best. Bloopers. I want all your bloopers. I want Dave's bloopers. That was Kelly Zitlow when she when she put up that blooper uh, uh, video, it blew up because she's the most professional, articulate, poised speaker you'll ever see. And then she put up the one where she's going, it's just like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, I like her so much more now. That's how I won the Darren Daly, Darren Hardy's Darren Daly. He did a Darren Daly star contest. And uh, I won. I beat this little girl who was super cute and deserved to win. But I won because at the end, Adam put in bloopers of me. I was trying to get my dogs to be in the video because I thought it'd be cute to have my dogs. And they didn't want to be yep. in it and be saying stupid stuff and sweating because it was 100 degrees in Arizona when I was filming it outdoors. <laughs> um, and it was totally the bloopers that won because it wasn't anything yep. smart that I said. Yep. Real. All right, people, it's 10.02. We're two minutes past. Thank you all for watching this far. Thank you for being there. Um, on behalf of Dave, the Trust Engine community, Bill, thank you for educating us on ways to monetize our database. And uh, I'm Todd Bookspan. Until next week, I'm out. All right. Take care, everybody. We'll see you guys. Bye for now.